Here we have our little ultrasound machine. As you can see, it's a portable unit, and these uh, portable tech, uh, units, the technology is really quite, um, quite good nowadays for more modest applications like for musculoskeletal stuff. Actually, you can even do cardiac stuff with this stuff too. All right, um, let me get that above there. All right, so I'm going to run through a fa fairly quickly uh, a uh, general knee exam now, um, and it's Jonas? Jonas. Yeah, Jonas here uh, has been kind enough to volunteer his knee, and um, he's having pain on the inside part of his knee here. All right. But because I like to be complete, I'm going to start at the top. All right, so I'm cold gel here. Yep. All right, now I know this screen, it looks, looks like just a bunch of who knows what up there, so I'm gonna orient everybody once I get established. Okay, so hopefully you can see the little arrow going here. Bone has a bright white surface to it like this, and because, as I mentioned, the sound does not penetrate into the bone, you can't see anything underneath it. That's why it's dark in there, all right? And Jonas, sorry, I know it's gonna be a little difficult for you to see all this okay. stuff. Um, let me see if I can rotate there a little bit. Okay. All right, so that is his kneecap right there. All right, and to orient you, the skin surface is here. Deeper down, like his bone and stuff is down here. His feet are sort of towards this direction, and his uh, you know, hip and head and all that are kind of towards that direction. So if I move up his leg, we can see his muscle and his tendons and all that stuff and his quadriceps. That's the surface of his femur bone right there. And then as I move down the knee, then we see his kneecap. And then here's that quadriceps tendon. This is where a lot of people like jumpers, basketball players and such will have tendon problems here. You can kind of appreciate, let me just get the gel going here. All right, it's a little bit of a curved surface, so the image is not perfect. But if I freeze it uh, here, you can see that bright parallel pattern that we were kind of uh, showing before with that Achilles tendon. Here, same thing, that quadriceps tendon, similar kind of appearance. Looks pretty good. We're not seeing any darkening or thickening or anything like that. Um, there's a tiny little bone spur right there. It's about one, less than one millimeter. To give you a sense of size, you see these blue tick marks right here? Each one of these tick marks is one millimeter. So on the big screen there, the magnification factor is about 10 to one. So everything's gonna look really huge on there. All right, so we move down. Here's the surface of the kneecap right here. And then we keep moving down. And then now here is his patellar tendon down here. This is where people get um, like with jumper's knee and stuff like that. So this is actually a very common place for people to have problems is um, right at the tip of that insertion right there. And you look, yeah, it looks pretty good there. All right, so you, we got the nice parallel lines right there. And then looking all the way across that tendon looks pretty good. And it attaches down here on the, what we call the tibial tuberosity. And again, that looks pretty good. Maybe some very, very mild thickening right there, but I wouldn't write home about that. That actually looks pretty good. The other thing we can see is fluid. So when there's fluid in the knee, most of the time, it hangs out um, kind of in, in, in this area right here. And fluid is dark almost black actually and I'm not really seeing anything there looks all right fluid would be bad um you know fluid is the is a sign that there's been injury to the knee but the fluid itself does not cause a problem unless you have a huge amount of fluid in there um, to give you an idea the knee naturally has about on average 16 milliliters or 16 cc's of, of natural joint fluid uh, when you see fluid collections uh, that you kind of when you drain a knee uh, anything more than 10 cc's that you can actually draw out of the knee is, you know, uh, a reasonable amount. The most I've ever drawn out of the knee was, I think, 66 uh, cc's out of a knee. I've drawn 101 cc's out of a shoulder. Uh, this 92-year-old little petite woman with a long-time history of rheumatoid arthritis had this huge shoulder effusion, and uh, all you saw on the screen was fluid, so it was like syringe after syringe after syringe. It ended up being 101 cc's. It's pretty crazy, yeah. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to move to the inside edge of the knee. And I, I apologize. I know the screen's kind of moving around a lot as I'm kind of gathering my gel here. All right, so inside edge of the knee. This right here is the, the inner part of the bone of the thigh, all right? So the femur or thigh bone is right here. And so it's thin right here, and I'm kind of tracking down, 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 and it gets thicker, 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 thicker. 
And right there, hold on. Yep, right there is uh, sort of the most inner part of the, you know, it's kind of like when you push on your bone on your knee, you can feel how the, you know, you kind of got that little bony part on the inside edge. That's what that is right here, all right? The medial collateral ligament attaches to this region right here, and it's right here. And as I track down, I can already tell that it's been under a little bit of chronic stress because the surface of the bone is a little bit rocky. Like, you see that little super tiny bone spur right there? It's not perfectly smooth. And because it's not perfectly smooth, that indicates that there's been some stress to the area. Like right there, you can appreciate a little bit of rockiness. And it's not really bad. It's just a sign that, you know what, you've been active. All right. Now here we see, aha, we have a meniscal cyst. OK. OK, this is good. So we're actually going to see something. I'm going to zoom in on this image, kind of make it a little bit bigger. All right. And then I'm going to pause it and point out what the heck I'm looking at here. So just give me a moment. Again, I have to do the little tiny movements just to get the optimum image. And even the optimum image, people, I'm sure some people are going to be like, what the heck is all that fuzziness? Doesn't look like anything to me. All right, there we go. All right, so this is what we're looking at. Here is the femur or thigh bone. And then beneath that, you've got the shin bone right here, the tibia. The joint in between, this is the joint line right here. This triangular piece, that's the medial meniscus right there, all right, medial meniscus. Now, this is only a small portion of the meniscus that you can see. Now, here's the interesting thing. A healthy meniscus is flush with the surface of the bones right here. So the triangle's actually in here. You can see how this triangle's displaced, all right? So it's actually kind of sticking out right there. So what this means is that you likely have a tear somewhere in your meniscus. And so what's happening is that the integrity of this, I, I compare the meniscus with like um, a steel belted tire, right? Filled with air, if you, if you mess up the integrity of the tire, I mean, in, in a bad case, the tire's gonna blow, right? Mm -hmm. But if you pop a tire, it's gonna sort of leak, right? And then so you get this sort of, you know, the tire can get kind of squishy or almost like if it's a balloon, it gets kind of squishy in it, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. So the meniscus is a little bit squishy, if you will, and it's protruding here like this. Furthermore, the ligament that's right on top of it, that medial collateral ligament, the MCL that I was referring to, is up in here. You can see how this portion, nice and bright, that's healthy ligament right there. Over here, on the other hand, you see how it's a little bit dark right there? So that darkened area of the ligament may represent a chronic sprain of that ligament. Now, many times you will have a combination of both a ligamentous sprain and a meniscal injury together because the meniscus, as you can see here, it's actually attached to the ligament. So if you were to go in here and peel the ligament back, you would peel the meniscus along with it. All right? So this is a very classic appearance of, some, of meniscal injury. And I can't tell you where uh, the tear is or how it happened or anything like that. Mm -hmm. All I can tell you is that you have a tear that's occurred. And this is a sign that you've had a tear because this meniscus has migrated here, number one. And then number two, you've got a chronic spraining of, that, uh, of the ligament there. So you can get a pretty, and uh, have you had an MRI of your knee? No. Okay. The MRI would be able to give good information about the inside of your knee and look at that meniscus, but it might not even pick up on that sprain of that MCL because it's pretty small. I mean, when you're looking at it, this is like less than two millimeters thick. And a lot of times, the cuts on an MRI are more than two millimeters. They're like three mil two to four millimeters in thickness. So a lot of times, it's going to miss a, a tear, potentially, mm -hmm. uh, if it's not um, you know, if it's not big enough to get caught on the, you know, on the sequential cuts. Okay, so I'm going to unpause here. All right, so there again is that, that triangle of that meniscus right there. And sorry, I'm losing jaw contact here. All right, right, yeah, right in there. All right. And then, you know, we can go down and look at some of the bursal areas down in here. And there's a bunch of other stuff that we could look at, but, you know, uh, I'm not going to bore you all too much with that. But you kind of get the point that you can see different types of structures. You can see bone, you can see fluid, you can see meniscus, ligament, tendon, muscle. Uh, by the way, the muscle it has sort of this, um, as they call it, a starry night appear. Or, yeah, it's kind of up in here. It's a little bit darker and kind of fibular looking. When you look at it in cross section, if I rotate 90 degrees, it has, as they say, kind of like a starry night appearance is what they call it in there. You can see nerves with this thing too, but I mean, there aren't any really any major nerves in the knee, so unfortunately, we, you know, we're not really gonna see anything good there. But uh, you know, it gives you an idea of what you can see with the resolution and how accurately, you know, as you can see, if each one of these is one millimeter, if I go back to that ligament, 
and it's like that whole splitting hairs thing, right? You can actually see, for example here, the difference between one little fiber in the ligament and another little fiber in the ligament, and that distance right there is about one-tenth of one millimeter. I can put a needle in there and actually separate out those two layers. You have to have a pretty steady hand to do it, but you know, with, with enough training, it's actually it's not that difficult. So if I wanted to, for some reason, let's say that this was an area of injury, like you had a, a little tiny tear in your ligament, mm -hmm. and I wanted to put PRP in there, I could put the PRP right in that little layer right there and put in like two-tenths of a cc and get that area healed. Um, very, very accurate. And uh, the nice thing about having that degree of accuracy is you don't need to poke the needle around so much. You can do it very precisely, hit one spot. You don't need as much volume. And that, it, those two things in combination make the procedure much less uh, painful. So it's a lot more comfortable and you're getting it exactly where it needs to go to heal the tissue of patients uh, that unfortunately, they actually had prolotherapy and PRP done um, with other practitioners. And I know most of the folks around here that do these therapies and it, not to take anything away from them because I've worked with them personally and they're good people, they have good skills. But with certain applications, like in a rotator cuff tear, I had one patient that came in and had uh, four PRP treatments on his shoulder and was maybe 60% better, um, but they didn't use the ultrasound. And in this particular individual, having the precision of the ultrasound was very helpful. I've done two treatments on him, and he's 100%. So um, sometimes you need that degree of accuracy. You don't need that degree of accuracy all the time. But having it available right here, like, you know, right in room number four over there, it, it's, it's very nice.